Welcome to the Knot of the Week. Today we are going to be tying the Crab Claw via Ferrata Lanyard. All right, guys, for those of you that are not familiar with the term via ferrata, allow me to explain a little bit. So the definition of via ferrata means the iron way, and while that sounds like a Game of Thrones reference, it's really in reference to the steel cables that you're using to traverse a, a very steep mountain range, I guess. So um, it's typically set up along a trail. So for instance, I climbed a via ferrata in Telluride when I was doing a Haley strategic course years ago, and that's kind of what got me interested in this type of operation with the dual lanyards. Um, so what this is, is it's a way to traverse those steel cables. And every time you hit a solid anchor point, it allows you to clip around it. Because if you can imagine a steel cable running across a mountainside, uh, at certain intervals, you're going to have to have um, anchor points in there to hold the steel cable. So every time you encounter one of those as you're traversing it, you have to clip around it or whatever kind of safety pro you have to prevent you in case of a fall, you have to have two points of contact on that cable because as you clip around it, you don't want to remove your protection. Um, you want to be able to keep a, you know, a lanyard on that steel cable while you clip the other one and then you undo that one and clip around and you keep going. So that's the premise of a, a via ferrata lanyard or a crab claw. So the crab claw in this sense comes from the double locking carabiners that are used. So um, these are, this is one style and this is another style. So there's two different versions. This one weighs about half as much as this does. Um, and I like this better. It's a little more lightweight. It feels a little more ergonomic in the hand versus this because you are using these to clip around those wires at various intervals. So what allows you to clip around them too, which I didn't really go over, is there's handholds too. So a via ferrata is not just a cable climb. It's also, it also includes routes that have uh, bridges and things like that. Um, also, um, just really any kind of narrow mountain path that, that is steep and requires some type of man-made element to protect you in case of a fall. That's really kind of kind of the deal. And that could just be a suspension bridge to prevent you from or to be to allow you to, you know, go across some valley or gorge or something like that. So that's kind of the premise behind this. So with these carabiners, double locking refers to the fact that the gate on these will not open. It's locked right now until you depress this backside. So the backside of this has a little latch here. So you have to engage that and then open the carabiner to fully disengage the gate on that. So same thing with this. Again, that's the thing you need to push here and then it allows you to open the gate. So it's very handy. You definitely don't want to do that with like a standard locking carabiner. Even some of the ones like this with an auto gate, you're still kind of having to manipulate that and it's, it's just kind of chunky with a D-ring. It's just not very intuitive. Um, it gets old. Pretty much so we are going to use one of these in the construction of it but what you'll need is two of these double locking carabiners i have a 10 foot section of dynamic rope again this is fall protection so you want something that's dynamic you don't want to just ugh, hold, hold on to a static line in case you fall uh, you want something that's dynamic uh, this happens to be 8.4 millimeter rope um, and then i've also got a couple of sections three sections to in fact of tubular webbing and we're going to use this to reinforce some of the friction points that are going to be tied on this. So now that I've kind of gone over what's necessary, let's get into tying it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is tie a triple fisherman's knot onto one of these double locking carabiners. So the way that I've kind of come up with this to make it pretty easy is I've been measuring out a 20 inch section. So that's where I want my bite at that I make in this line to tie the triple fisherman. So basically I'm going to measure out 20 inches here and that's where my bite is going to go in the rope. And that's where I will intersect the carabiner at. So to do that and to reinforce it, I'm going to slip one of these pieces of tubular webbing over it. These are just five inch sections of tubular webbing that I just cut off of a big piece of tubular webbing. And again, what makes it tubular webbing is that it's hollow. So it's perfect for an application like this. And again, what we're doing is just kind of reinforcing uh, wear points on this because it will get worn a lot as you traverse something and continually clip around. So 
Now I'm going to take this and run it through the carabiner and that piece of webbing is going to stop right there. Gonna just check and make sure I got my 20 inches there. And now I'm gonna tie a triple fisherman. So the deal here when you're tying around this webbing is that the first wrap of the triple fisherman's you want to not intersect that webbing uh, because we're actually gonna push that up. So now we're gonna wrap around a second time. So as you saw, it's basically just a single wrap, but as I, as I continue wrapping, I'm gonna wrap on top of that piece. So as you can see there, that's the start of that. Then I'm gonna wrap again, and this one I wanna trap with the webbing, and the third I wanna trap with the webbing. So now I've got three different spots, or three wraps, and I'm going to press this through. You have to loosen it up a little bit sometimes to get it completely through. And it's going to go through that bottom section too. So I'm trying to do this as carefully as I can because I don't want a lot of slack. And that's kind of the challenging part of this is that you want to get this tight, but you also don't want a lot of slack at the end. I apologize for probably jumping all over the place, but I want to make sure this is, there we go. All right, so there's our first triple fisherman's, and that's kind of what it looks like. So you've got your wrap. It actually looks like it's four different wraps in some points, but the core of the wrap where you see this dedicated fisherman's type style is a triple wrap. So that's a triple fisherman's. We're gonna just slide that up too. That's kind of another thing you wanna do is just push this up as much as possible because that'll kind of help keep that shape as, as you're moving forward. So now we've got one side tied. Now I'm going to come here and I'm going to kind of do the same thing that I did before and measure out a 20 inch section, but I'm going to use that a different way this time. First of all, there's my 20 inch section and I'm going to slip another piece of five inch webbing over this, but this time, this piece of webbing is gonna go all the way to the middle of the rope. So it's going to just kind of hang out right here until we get done tying this other one. So we're now going to put another piece of webbing here. Just like so. Now we'll get back to our 20 inch measurement. And again, this 10 foot of, of rope, I don't know if I've mentioned it or not, but this is kind of like, the way that I came up with that dimension is I use my wingspan, and I'll kind of explain that once we, once we get through tying this. So basically my arms stretched out as far as they could go with the carabiners in my hand. That's kind of what I used as my guidepost to, to how long this, this needs to be. So while this might work for me, as far as the lengths go that I'm discussing, it's probably gonna vary with, the, with your wingspan. So again, we're going to now slip the carabiner over this, just like so, and tie another triple fisherman's. Okay, so now we've got both of our triple fisherman's tied on each of our crab claws, and now we're going to come to the midpoint. So I'm just gonna stretch this out just to make sure that we're right in the middle and we're going to tie a figure eight. So a figure eight with a bite um, is going to come around the back and back through just like this. So that is going to be the figure eight on a bite. And what we're going to do is really just kind of clean this up quite a bit because we want to make sure that this is just enough to slip this carabiner in here, but at the same time, we don't want to leave a bunch of slack in it as well. So I'm going to go ahead and put the carabiner on and kind of keep cleaning this up as we go. As you can see, I'm just kind of tightening this up. All right, so now what we've got is a center part and two crab claws. And this goes around your harness. So this is the anchor point at which your 
you're tying around your harness, and then again, now you've got these two crab claws in your hands to be able to clip around. And as you clip around, you leave one engaged, and now you've got at least a single point of contact and safety as you traverse across a Via Ferrata. Thanks for watching the Knot of the Week. To find out what kind of parts we used in the knot, look below in the description and you will find links to all the items that we used. Some of them are Amazon. We like to use Amazon because it's quick, it's prime, and we get affiliate income just to put that out of there. So if you're shopping and you need to help support ITS, you can do so by clicking those links below. We would very much appreciate it. Um, also, we have a membership on ITS. If you'd like to check out our membership, that is linked below as well. We'd very much appreciate your support. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next Knot of the Week.